Hi card making friends and welcome to the Canada Day Video Hop. I'm Sandy McIver and today I'm creating with these lovely products from our sponsor Studio Ketia. I have the Darling Freesia with the coordinating dies and for my background the dotted slimline set 3. Studio Ketia is also very well known for their beautiful embellishments and their embellishment tool. I'm starting by using my Mental Black Ink to stamp my images onto Hannah Merrill white cardstock and I'm going to stamp these a couple of times to make sure that they're good and dark colored. I'm going to be doing some Copic coloring uh, so I'm setting this up and I'm going to do three different color combinations. I'm starting with yellow using Y11, Y15 and Y19. For the purples I'm using V12, V15 and V17. As you can see here, uh, for the pinks, I'm using R81, 83, and 85. And for the little bit of green on the cards for the stems, YG21, 23, and 17. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in and I am going to do one full coloring with these pinks. And then I'll just show you one flower sped up a little bit with the other two color combinations. So I'm going to start with my darkest color first, which is my R85. And as you can see, I'm going in and I'm adding shadows. This is the darkest of the pinks. And then we're going to blend them out with the other two lighter colors. And so the artist drawing on this, wherever the lines are, is kind of where the shadows like to be. And that's where I'm adding the darkest of the colors. And I'm going to do the entire thing at once. It's a small image, so it's quite easy to do that. When you get into bigger images, you might want to break it down into sections. That way your ink will stay a little bit damp on the paper and you'll be able to blend it a little bit easier. So I'm changing over. I'm going to my R83, which is my mid-tone. And I'm adding a little bit more and flicking my lines out a little bit more. And I'm going over the dark, which is helping to blend it and pull it out a little bit. And obviously the more you blend, then the lighter your dark color is going to get. So if you decide that you got a little bit too dark with it, just keep blending and it'll lighten it out. Or you can add more dark, depending on your preferences. When I color with Copic markers, I like to use uh, three colors, a light, a medium, and a dark. I don't very often get into four or fives. Um, I just find this is a nice way to blend without taking a whole bunch of time to color an image. Get into these little tiny guys at the end. Okay, and now I'm switching over to my lighter color, which is my R81. I also call this my blending color. So it's the lightest, and I'm going back over the other two colors, and I'm blending everything together. And you may notice that in a couple of these petals, I leave a little bit of a white spot, and that's just to kind of highlight the sunlight shining on the actual petal. I think I point one out here momentarily. But I'm just working my way around each of the petals, Blending in with this lighter color, the R81. And it gives it a really nice blend. So see, there's where I left a little white spot so that it looks like the light is really shining on that spot. And it gives the rest of the flower a little bit more depth. And so just quickly going along and blending and... There we go, we're finished with that color. We're going to flip over to the greens. And again, I'm going to start with the darkest color which is my YG17. And again, I've decided that my light is coming from the right-hand side, so I'm putting my darker colors on the left-hand side so that I add a little bit of depth. So I'm just going down each left side with that darkest color, coming back in with my medium, which is my YG23, and adding a little bit of that. And I'm leaving a tiny little bit of space for the third color, which is the YG21. That's my lightest shade, and again, also my blending. So I'm adding, filling in the white spot, but I'm also going over the other two previous greens to blend them all together. And then I'm going to take it, and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to the center of my flowers for where the stamens are and a little bit of yellow on some of the petals just to highlight maybe the sun shining on them. It also adds some life to the flowers by adding this little bit of yellow. And there we go. 
pretty card all or pretty flowers all colored. So here's the purple one. Again, I'm starting with the darkest, which is the V17 and adding my shadows. And that's really easy to do because with the lines already being there, it's just super easy to figure out where to put it. Now I'm in with my mid color, which is the V15 and I'm blending out that dark and making my little lines a little bit longer, pulling more into the center of the flower petals. And hey, I forgot to do that one in the back. <laughs> Funny, you get so intent on working on something that you forget everything else that's around it. Now flipping over to the lightest color, which is my V12. It's almost a pink, but it's really pretty for blending this together. It really pulls the colors together. And again, just pulling all the colors down through the middle, shading and filling in. Okay, so you're just going to carry on and do the rest of the flowers and add that little bit of yellow in there as well. Okay, my final color is the yellows. I'm starting with Y19, which is my darkest. Again, doing the shadows. Then I'm coming in with the Y15, my second color, pulling out my little strokes a little bit farther, probably about halfway for each of the petals. And then I'm coming back in with my Y11, and that's my blending color. And it's a really nice pale yellow. And of course you don't need to add yellow to the center of these flowers because hey, it's already there. There we go. And here's the finished one. So here's all the different ones. And then I die cut them all with a coordinating die and I'm ready to start creating my cards. So when I was looking at this, I decided that there wasn't very much green because there's not any leaves. So I decided to do a background and I'm using my Lindy's Magicals. And I've got two sizes here and I just ordered some more sticky mats. These are the Misty sticky mats and they're for the Misty to hold your paper down while you're stamping, but they have some other uh, things that you can do with them as well. One of them is holding them sturdy and flat when you're going to do some watercoloring or in this case playing with some magic powders. So they're awesome. Get yourself a package. They're inexpensive and I'm finding all kinds of uses for them. They're great for stenciling as well. So with these Mindy's colors, you can either start wet or dry. I prefer to start wet because it keeps the powder confined to my paper instead of all over my work surface. This stuff is really light and it flies all over the place. So wet your paper first. You'll see that I spritzed. Add some powder and then spritz some more. You pick up your uh, misty sticky mat with your cardstock attached to it. And I'm using watercolor paper for this. And you can manipulate it and move it around with a sticky mat. It's really awesome. It doesn't fall off when it's wet. And see how I'm moving the colors around? And I'm trying to get rid of all of the white space by just moving it around and then letting the drips fall off onto my very well used paper towels. There we go. And this one is longer because I'm going to make a slimline card as my one of my cards today. And I'm just adding a little bit more of the powder, trying to get the colors to blend and cover all of that white space. So when you find that a color is too dark, all you have to do is add a little bit more water. And if you decide that you over dilute it and it's too light, you can always add more pigment back in. So I needed a paintbrush here. I got a couple of white spots that weren't filling in very well. And this is very blue, so I'm adding a little bit more green to it. Uh, what's this one called? I wrote it down here somewhere. Lucky Shamrock Green. The other two colors I was using was Tibetan Poppy Teal and Shabby Turbine Teal were the first two colors I used. Okay, so here's my green. I've spritzed it to get it working and now I'm just going to manipulate it by moving my sticky mat around and letting the colors run. And again, letting any of the drips just fall off. You can add more water to get it running a little bit more. Add, use your paintbrush to fill in any little white spots. There we go. Coming back to this one, adding some spritz to get that green going. This one ends up being quite dark. So I'm going to add some more water to it uh, because I want it a little bit lighter. It's going to take over and then my flowers aren't going to look very nice because the background will be way too dark. 
adding a little bit more blue because now I have too much green and that's what's fun about these powders is you could just play with them for hours I have again letting the drips fall off okay I got that one little blue streak there I think I'm okay with it so when you're finally finished just gently pull your paper off and then you can just take your sticky mats, rinse them under cold water and lay them aside to dry. You can let the paper backgrounds dry or you can use your heat tool and dry them yourself. And I'm working today on my white glass mat and as you can see, super easy cleanup. All right, so I have my long piece and I need to cut it. I'm going to be die cutting it with the outside die the one with the scalloped edges and I don't know if you noticed or not but it also has a beautiful stitched edge as well so I have trimmed my watercolor paper so that I can still see that stitched edge. Now I've made a stencil out of the center part and I'm going to be using that to add some dots but first I wanted to show you I made this entire card out of one sheet of cardstock and I've given the measurements on my blog. So I'm laying my stencil over top of my background piece and I'm adding some post-it note tape to the back I'm going to be using a blending brush and some Distressed Oxide Peacock Blue just to add some circles, just to add a little bit of background noise on my card so that there's a little bit of something to look at behind the flowers. And I don't want to get this too dark, that's why I keep checking it, but dark enough that you can see it. There we go, I'm happy with that one. So I'm ready to glue this down to my card base, there we go. And Studio Kecia has also come out with some double-sided foam, which I'm using on the back of my top piece before I mount it to my card base. Okay, so now I'm going to position all my flowers on there, and I used some foam squares to add the flowers, and then I white heat embossed some sentiments, which I'm now chopping up into little bitty pieces so that I can also add those to my card. My glass board is magnetic so I'm going to hold my card down with a magnet in the center and I'm going to embellish with the Studio Katia Marshmallow Pearls Embellishing. These things are beautiful. They're white but they have an iridescent mother pearl finish on top of them so they're really lovely and sparkly and I'm using the Studio Katia Embellishment Tool to add them along with my Barely Art Glue, my favorite stuff in the whole world. And I don't want to add too many, but uh, just a little bit of bling in the background. That's all I'm looking for there. So when you're finished, pop them back into those cool little seal up bags and off you go. Let's start my second card. This is an A2 size card. So I have cut the front down with a die and I'm adding the same ink this is the Peacock Blue through the stencil that I created, and that was created with the Dotted Slimline Set 3 from Studio Katia. And I'm just adding some dots down the bottom kind of right-hand side of my card front because the flowers are going to cover the other side. So I've attached that to the card base. I've added my Freesia, and again, I am embellishing with the Marshmallow Pearls. Aren't they beautiful? Another pretty card. And I love the detail in the background. The Mindy's Magical powders have glimmer in them, so this background is really glittery. So here's my finished two cards. The A2 card at the top with the three colors of the flowers and the pretty pearls and the beautiful background. I love how these came together. And I love how the green kind of really helps support the flowers, even though there were no stems or no leaves uh, in this design. And here's my slimline one. I like this one too. I love all the pretty colors combined together. I have a supply list listed below and there's also a link to my blog where you can download the PDFs for these cards. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider subscribing and giving me a thumbs up. And a huge thank you to our sponsors today who helped to make this blog hop possible. I hope you will support them.